Shane, the question was if you could just uh, give us some uh, answers about uh, getting back to MLS Cup and, and what you're looking forward to this year. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a it's going to be a big challenge coming away from home, and I was trying to get the victory, but I think uh, this path to the to the championship has been kind of a big test in all in all matters of our team. So I think if we can put together one, one really good performance, we'll have a great opportunity. Okay, now we'll go to uh, Rachel Krigger, and after Rachel will be uh, Charlie Bohm. Rachel, uh, go ahead with your question, and please identify who you'd like to speak to. Yeah, hi, guys. My first question is for Shane and then um, for Gustav. I, can you hear me, Gustav? Yeah, I hear you. Okay, so for Shane, um, my question for you is, um, with Javier Arriaga being back in Seattle, just um, – I don't know if pressure is the right word, but how much pressure, I guess, are you feeling knowing you're going to be um, in the starting role once again? I, obviously, it's not something new to you this year. Um, you guys have kind of rotated, but since it's a final, what's the pressure like? Um, and then for Gustav, um, could you talk about your you know, role on the team and, and what it meant to score that game-winning goal um, against Minnesota? Thanks, guys. Hey. Um... No, I mean, I feel like I, all season long, it's just been about doing my job. You know, if I have to come in and play, just knowing my role on the team. Obviously, we've got a top, top team. I think probably the, one of the best teams in MLS, clearly, as we're here in the final. And I just got to come in and do my job. So I'm not, to be honest with you, I'm not feeling that much more pressure than I would normally. I think it's just about doing my job and helping the team win. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um... It's, it's hard for me to, to talk about myself and my role in the team. I think it's better to ask someone else about that. Um, I've always seen myself as a team player, so um, I'm happy to help my team score goals. It's not that happen that often that I score goals, but uh, I'm happy to help. And uh, now we're back here where we want it to be and, uh, you know, just looking forward to more. Great. Thank you. Uh, once again, we have with us uh, Gustav Svensson, uh, Shane O'Neill and Will Bruin. Our next question will go to Charlie Bohm, then followed by Ramon Betek Malak. Uh, Charlie, go ahead, please. Hey, <clears throat> thanks, Rick. Thanks, guys, for your time today. This one's for Will. Uh, Will, you've been around this league a minute and uh, been to a few MLS Cup finals. I, I was wondering if, if there's any historical um, perspective for you guys. Um, we've battered around the dynasty word this week uh, a little bit. Um, and is there any kind of motivation that you guys get from from doing something that maybe nobody in this league's history has done uh, tomorrow? Um, no, I think we we take a lot of pride in every game. Um, you know, whether it's Champions League, Open Cup, MLS Cup Final, I think we're always making sure we're in a final. And I think that proves to the character of the team. Um, I don't think nobody inside our locker room is talking about dynasty mode. We can't even talk about it until uh, until after this game, and hopefully we can get a win. But I think we just we take care of every game that's in front of us, and that leads us to finals. And, you know, right now we're in another final, but there's still a lot of work to be done um, tomorrow. So we just need to make sure that we're uh, focused and prepared for the game tomorrow. Great. Thank you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to ask a question, please raise your hand uh, to do so. Uh, again, we have with us Gustav Svensson, uh, Shane O'Neill, and Will Bruin. Our next question will go to Ramon Betek Malak. Uh, Ramon, if you'd like to ask a question, please. Sure, thank you. Well, so the same question is for Will Bruin and Gustav Svensson. So you both were in the bench last game against Minnesota and you both scored a goal so what does it mean to you and how can you apply this uh, like to the next game uh, with Columbus your experiences and your knowledge thank you uh, I mean no one wants to start on the bench everyone wants to start game everyone wants to play as many minutes as possible um, but I mean it doesn't matter if you play one minute or 90 minutes you always want to do an impact of the game uh, you always want to show yourself, your teammates, your fans that you're, you know, you're doing your best to win the game. Um, and now it's such an important game. So, you know, you just have to focus on on the game tomorrow and, and uh, see what, whatever lineup there will be. 
Yeah, echoing off of uh, what Gustav said. Obviously, you wanna you wanna start and play every every game, play as many as many minutes as you can. But you know, the, the coach only puts out eleven starters. So um, if you're not in that starting eleven, you need to control what you can control, and that's your mindset and your mentality, and making sure that you're uh, ready if your number gets called upon. Okay, we'll go to Chris Francis with our next question, please, then followed by John Lupo. Uh, please remember to identify uh, which player or all the players you wish to ask a question to. Uh, Chris, go ahead. Hey, Shane, I, I, I'm curious about Stefan Fry. I mean, he's been such a mainstay for the Sounders. And, and when you came to the team, I, I don't know what you expected in terms of working with him, but what, what have you found out over the last, over this season and, and just how pivotal has he been in, in the Sounders' success? Obviously, a huge part. Yeah, huge part, without a doubt. You know, obviously, one of the best goalkeepers in the league. And he's that guy who comes up big for you in those moments that you need him as a center back. You know, obviously, you're not going to run the perfect race every game. You're always going to have one or two mishaps. And when your goalie can bail you out and make those big saves that he does, I mean, it's no wonder um, – He's kind of been this, one of the stalwarts in this in this big run for the Sounders because you know he's a great leader and and like I said, a, just a big time shot stopper. So um, yeah, it's been it's been a real pleasure working with Steph. Obviously, you know I think it's been one of the things that I've enjoyed most this season and um, hopefully another big big performance for him tonight, tomorrow night. Okay, we'll go to John Lupo now, followed by Alonso Contreras. Uh, John, uh, go ahead with your question, please. Yes, uh, <clears throat> congratulations to all three of you for uh, getting this far. Um, so my question is, in the Western Conference Final against Minnesota, you guys were down 2-1, to one, but, you know, you've won two championships in the last four years and now going for three and five. Do you think your experience, because they hadn't been in that position a lot, do you think your experience to help you guys get over the line and, you know, were able to come back and win that game. And do you think if it's a close game tomorrow that your experience in these situations in the later rounds of the playoffs and then in MLS Cups will help you against Columbus? I mean, I think that with experience comes confidence. Uh, you know that you can overcome every situation. Um, like you said, we were down 2-0 last game and we overcome and won – Three two, and that gives us tons of confidence into to the next game. Um, and we have an experienced team, but you also have to have the talent. You have to have the quality, uh, individual quality, and team quality. And uh, I think we have all of that. Um, we just got to show it over over ninety minutes tomorrow. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, now we'll go to Alonso Contreras, uh, followed by Rachel Krigger. Alonso, uh, go ahead, please. Thank you. Uh, welcome back and, con and congratulations, all of three. Uh, Shane, this question is for you. The, play uh, the playoff at Seattle was without fans. Tomorrow, Mafre is expecting 1,500 fans. Is that a motivation, regardless that it will be a lot of fans rooting for Columbus Crew? Not really. I don't think, if I'm being honest with you. I think uh, we've come here to do a job. We've come here to win the championship. I think a couple guys might have some family members or so something like that if it's if it's safe and allowed. And I think that's a much bigger motivation than 1,500 people in the stands. Even if it was a full stadium, I think, you know, the guys have touched on it. The team is so single-minded, focused of winning a championship that that's our goal. You know, I don't think the, the fans or the atmosphere is going to make that much of a difference, if I'm being honest. Okay, we'll go to Rachel Krigger, followed by Jeremiah Oshan. Uh, Rachel, go ahead, please. Shane, sorry to pick on you some more, but I got one, another one for you. Um, I asked this to Stefan um, yesterday when we talked to him. There's been a lot of changes on the defensive line, and most recently with Alex Roldan coming in, um, and then still in the last game, Kelvin came into the game um, in the second half and whatnot. Um, the switch on the left over there with Nuhu and Brad Smith. How do you kind of juggle all of these different players coming in? I mean, this is your first season with the club. So how do you manage, you know, okay, well, I got to work with Kelvin or, or Alex and, and whatnot. Yeah, I think over the, the season, I think we've done a good job of sort of trying to, to mesh on the fly. You know, obviously, 
at this point, you know, I think I've got new who and Yaimar and, and, and Kelvin, even Alex to at now their tendencies down to a, a little bit. So I feel comfortable playing and obviously Brad's been new, but you know, we've had a couple of minutes together. So I think over the season um, you develop those relationships, obviously when they make those changes, you, you expect that it's going to be a different type of back line. It's going to be a different type of way we can play out of the back with, uh, with whoever the personnel is. But I think at this point, you know, we just got to trust in one another. Obviously, I think I've developed a pretty good relationship with Nuhu, and uh, hopefully we can hold down that left side. Okay, now we'll go to Jeremiah Ocean, followed by Felipe Cardenas. Uh, Jeremiah, go ahead, please. Hey, Will, uh, having not been able to participate in last year's MLS Cup, how much more, I don't know, satisfying or important was it for you to to be able to uh, contribute to getting you guys back into this year's MLS Cup? Yeah, for me, um, on a personal level, level uh, this year means a lot more to me. Last year, obviously, it's great to win MLS Cup, but um, on a personal level, you want to be contributing, you want to be helping, you want to be part of the squad. Um you know, so this year it means it means a lot to me to get to MLS Cup final. Um, you know, but the work is not done. We still have another big game to do, and then um, you know, hopefully we can be listed another trophy. Okay, we'll have time for two more. Felipe Cardenas followed by Sam Stasekal. Felipe, go ahead, please. Hey guys, uh, Felipe Cardenas with the Athletic. Actually, anyone can answer this. I was I was talking to another MLS player yesterday who told me that when they played Columbus earlier in the season and Nagby was on the bench, like he did think to himself, like, all right, nice. Nagby's not playing today. Is, does that, I mean, just honestly and bluntly, do you, does that, are you guys thinking that? I know you're going to play final. They're going to replace him. It's, 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 it's a big match. But when a player like Nagby is not starting, will not be in the game, what goes through your mind? Does it give you a little bit of more, a little bit more confidence? Look, I'll, I'll say, uh, I, I, I think we focus on ourselves. We're not worried about what the other team's doing. I think we're one of the best teams in this league when we're on our game. And if we focus on what we need to do and control um, the, the type of game we want to play, the style we want to play, impose our will on teams, it doesn't matter who's on the other side of the field. That's just my uh, my thought. I'll let these, these two guys answer it um, as well. But, you know, we're not worrying about what's going on in the other locker room. We're worrying about our locker room. Okay, we'll uh, wrap it up then. Sam Stasekel, you get the last question. Sam, go ahead. Thanks so much. Appreciate you guys taking the time. Um, obviously, 2020 has been a hell of a year in many, many, many different ways. Uh, the three of you and your club have made it to the finish line here for MLS. Um, I'm curious if you had to kind of sum up this season, what it's meant, how difficult it's been, um, how would you do that? Um, I would love if, if several of you could answer, but if one of you wants to take it, that's fine too. Oh, that's a very tough question. Um, obviously, 2020 has been very difficult for us and for many others. Um, but our goal has always been to to be in this game. Um, so whatever obstacles we've we've faced, we've always you know faced them together and showed that we are a, a good team and, and good teammates that take care of each other uh, with respect for each other and respect for the society and everyone around us. Um, you know, soccer has become sometimes a secondarily thing in our lives this year. Um, so it's been very tough to sometimes motivate yourself to go train and go play games. But I think that we've shown that we are, like I said, a very strong team. And uh, we believe in each other and we believe that we can, we can win this, this cup again. And that's what we're going to do tomorrow.